Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about everyone's least favorite thing, pests. Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. So with bringing plants and dirt and all that comes with plants into your house, pests also unfortunately are a natural part of plant parenthood. There are all sorts of different kinds of pests. Some are good, some are bad. But today I'm just gonna be talking about the top house plant pests that we wanna get rid of. So this video is just going to be talking about my experience and pests that I have encountered and how I personally handle them. I should preface this by saying Pests aren't the kind of thing that just go away. I don't think anyone ever really handles them all the way to the point where you have none. So it's kind of an ongoing process and figuring out what works best for you. And it's just a battle we're continuously fighting. And to that end, I do currently have pests, I'm sure. I'm sure there's pests in these plants right now, but these are the things that I do to try to combat them and keep them controlled as much as possible. So the first pest I want to talk about is probably the most annoying pest, and that is fungus gnats. So fungus gnats are little stupid little flies that live in the soil of your plants. So if you ever have plants and you see little flies flying around them, or you think that you have fruit flies, but they're not flying around fruit, they're flying around your house plants, that's fungus gnats. Something interesting about fungus gnats is that they don't actually harm your plants in any way. They actually just eat the fungus that lives within the soil, so the naturally decaying material that lives within the soil. That being said, they are super, super annoying and will like fly into your nose and they're just like, yeah. I've also heard that they're attracted to CO2 that we breathe out. Do we breathe out CO2? To whatever we breathe out, they're attracted to that. So if one is flying around your face and you blow out, that actually makes them more attracted. I don't know if that's actually true. That's just something I've heard. We have a visitor. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> this is Suki. This is my doggy. Why do you look so tired? Why are you look so tired? You want to talk about fungus gnats? Fungus gnats? <laughs> Can you sit? Can you join us? Can you lay down? Good girl. Okay, she's just gonna chill right here and we're gonna keep talking about fungus gnats. <laughs> like I said, they eat the decaying material within the plants so they don't actually affect the health of your plants. I've heard that they can also eat like the roots if you have root rot, but fungus gnats happen mostly because you are overwatering your plants. So I've heard that some people to combat fungus gnats, they let their plants completely dry out in between waterings. But personally, I would rather my plants have as much water as they need than try to let them dry out completely. I don't know. I feel the need to jump in and explain this a little bit more i've seen people who like let their plants go like bone dry like completely dry and i let my plants dry out in between waterings because that's what most plants like but i don't want them to like die from drought if that makes sense so i let my plants dry out the right amount but in order to get rid of fungus gnats by letting your plants dry out it has to be like extreme drought hope that makes more sense but I've heard it's a very effective way to get rid of them if you just let your plants super dry out. But if you don't want to do that and you want to keep your plants watered, the thing that I would recommend are mosquito bits. One second. So these are mosquito bits. They come in either a small, <laughs> they come in either a small bottle or this is the bigger one. I actually am not sure what they are. Biological mosquito control. I don't know, but they are just these little brown bits. You can either pour them on the top of your soil, hi, or you can make a tea. So if you're making the tea, you take some hot water, put it into the watering can that you're gonna use and put the mosquito bits into the hot water and then let it sit overnight so that the water goes back to a regular temperature. And then ideally the material that is in the mosquito bits will go into the water. I'm not describing this well. It will like steep up what, it will steep up what's in the bits. So it's important to note mosquito bits only affect flies and mosquitoes and things like that. They're called mosquito bits because people use them a lot outside if they have plants outside and mosquitoes grow in them, but they only kill flies and things like that. So they don't harm your plant, they don't harm you. If like your cat or your dog, she's still right there. If your cat or your dog gets into your mosquito bits and eats them, it's not gonna affect them. It only affects 
flies and things like that. The way that I personally use mosquito bits is that I sprinkle it onto the top of the soil. Some people might not like what that looks like, but I don't mind it. And I sprinkle it onto the top of the soil and then just water normally. And it takes a couple weeks for it to start working, but once it does, you'll notice that your fungus gnats are starting to go away. Your breath stinks. Do you know that? I have just started mixing it into my soil. So when I start mixing soil, I just mix the mosquito bits right into it so that fungus gnats aren't even invited to the party from the second you pot up your plant. Another way to combat fungus gnats while you're waiting for your mosquito bits to start being effective is to use sticky traps. I have sticky traps all over my room right now because I have kind of been slacking when it comes to the mosquito bits. There's this one plant that my mom has. I'll show you. Ugh. That's how many fungus gnats it had because there were no mosquito bits. So yeah, that is how I deal with fungus gnats. Like I said, it's kind of an ongoing battle against them. But another houseplant pest that unfortunately we have to deal with sometimes, sometimes, sometimes is mealybugs. So they are these like white fuzzy looking bugs and they leave behind this white powder and they're super gross. I think they're like the grossest houseplant pest in my humble opinion. But they manifest in these little white tufts. They leave behind these little nests. They can actually affect the health of your plant because they can like suck the juice. This is not a scientific video, I should say that. They can like suck the juices out of your plants and yeah, they can super kill a plant. So the second you see one of these, you need to start combating it. So I kind of have a process for how I combat mealybugs. So when I first see a mealybug on a plant, I go at it right away. Where are you going? Are you sniffing the mosquito bits? Are you sniffing them? They're fascinating. Are you done? When I first see a mealybug, I immediately combat it with isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. This stuff has been really hard to find since Miss Rona started showing up on the scene back in March, but luckily I was able to find this one like in a closet somewhere. So this is just 70% isopropyl alcohol and I grab a Q-tip and I grab some of this and I do this. So I like to imagine the little stupid little bug screaming and being like, no. Nah. I do this. But you just go in and you dab each one and they will shrivel up and turn brown and then throw those away. Once you have taken off all of the mealybugs that you can find, I then go in and spray the plant off in the shower or if it's nice outside, I spray it down in the backyard with the hose just to get all of the rubbing alcohol off because in the short term it doesn't damage your plants but having rubbing alcohol on your plants probably isn't a great thing long term. Then once it dries off all the way, I will go in with this stuff. This is called eight. This is insect control thing. So I think there is a specific one for houseplants, but this is the garden and home one. I think this is fine to use inside. There's one that's specifically for houseplants, so I would recommend finding that one. Anyway, this stuff, I spray down the entire plant, tops and bottoms and sides and stems, all of the plant parts that I can find, and I spray them off with this stuff. If a plant has mealybugs, I will repeat this process about once a week, and hopefully, eventually, the plant will be mealybug-free. So the next houseplant pest I'm going to talk about is spider mites. So spider mites are very common and kind of hard to see sometimes. Alocasia, like this guy right here, my Alocasia Frydeck, who unfortunately is losing that leaf, but that's because he's putting out new leaves there. Spider mites are super, super attracted to alocasia like this or any sort of calathea or maranta or prayer plant like that. I honestly, I don't know what it is that makes them attracted to them, but they just love them. You can tell that your plant has spider mites because you can see the webbing on the plant. This is what the webbing looks like. I personally will take a phone flashlight and shine it on the opposite side of the leaf that I'm looking at so then it highlights the webbing even more so that you can clearly see that there are spider mites. They're not actually spiders, they're mites but they make little webs so that's why they're called spider mites. I'll take the plant into the shower or into the backyard if it's nice out. So first I will spray the plant down with water to get all of the webbing and all that stuff off and then I'll let it dry and then I'll spray it down with either eight or neem oil. So I like to do kind of a rotation so that one day I do with eight, then like three or four days later I'll spray it down with water and then I'll spray it down with neem oil kind of to like change up how I'm combating the pests. And hopefully after a couple weeks of doing that, 
probably up to about a month. Hopefully the spider mites will go away. That is also kind of a continuous struggle with those. But if you really keep up on the regimen of spraying it down every couple days, hopefully you'll be able to get rid of them completely from that plant. Okay, so the last pest that I want to talk about is scale. So scale is a hard backed insect that kind of burrows onto the plant. And that's another pest that can really damage your plant if you don't treat it. So I have only actually encountered scale two times ever in my plant journey so far. One is a golden dragon that I picked up and one of its leaves was completely covered in scale. It looked like that and it was so disgusting. The seller was super nice about it, gave me some money back for it, and I decided to take it on as a project. And the other experience that I have is on a Peperomia scandens that belonged to my grandmother. The stems were just completely covered with it. Like it looked like it had grown that way, but they're actually bugs. So the way that I dealt with it on the golden dragon was that I cut off that super infested leaf and then I quarantined the plant away from all my other plants because I don't want an outbreak on all of my plants. That would be so tragic. So I quarantined that plant and every four days to every week I would take it outside, inspect the plant for any signs of scale. I would scrape off the scale either with my fingernail or with like a spoon or something and spray the whole thing down with either neem oil or eight just like I do with spider mites. So after a couple months of doing this and after like three or four checks where there was no scale whatsoever, I finally felt comfortable enough to introduce the plant to the rest of my collection and now it just lives happily with all my other plants. Unfortunately with my grandmother's plant we had to chop a bunch of it because it was so far gone but we were able to scrape a bunch of it off of the existing plant and we were able to cut the plant back so that there was enough plant so that it would continue to grow. But the case was so severe that we had to get rid of a lot of the plant. That would have been nice if we had checked that earlier so it didn't get that severe. So there are also other kinds of houseplant pests like thrips and white fly and other things like that. Thankfully, knock on all of the wood, I haven't experienced any other pests other than those four that I have said in this video. Honestly, I'm sure I will encounter them at some point. Knock on wood that I don't. <laughs> but yeah, this is how I personally deal with my houseplant pests. Going forward, I would really like to start being more offensive against these pests instead of kind of trying to fight them once I find them. I am going to start taking a few plants at a time into the shower, spraying them down with water, spraying them down with neem oil, with eight, whatever, so that I am treating the plant before it has pests. It has sort of been a journey with collecting plants because I obviously have a lot of plants. This is just like half of my collection the other half is up here and around other places and it's hard when you have so many plants to keep up on the care because sometimes it's hard to even water them but I really want to start treating them better and be more preemptive about how I treat them so I would recommend inspecting your plants all the time if you can't treat all of them before they get pests just look them over check for spider webs check for bugs and that will make your life a whole lot easier because trust me dealing with outbreaks of these pests is not great but we're gonna get through it. So this was kind of a long-winded video, but I hope there was some helpful information. Again, this is just how I personally do it. There are other videos I'm sure that will be queued next or whatever about how other people do it. But yeah, that's how I personally have been dealing with houseplant pests. I wish you guys all the best of luck if you are currently dealing with pests or just in your journeys in general, because we're all gonna come across them at some point and it sucks. So thank you so much for watching this video. If it helped you in any way or taught you something new or maybe you're just watching it to watch it, thank you so much. It would help me out if you could subscribe to my channel and press the like button down below. I am going to try to be uploading more regularly on this channel for the next couple months. So I will see you back here pretty soon.